Hi, welcome back. I just thought today I would do a three cup, um, three cup pour. So what I prepared today is got um, warm collars and it's not collars that I usually uh, play with, but um, I thought I'd give it a go. So I have some white, which is the Montmartre titanium white. I have some burnt umber, which is this one. Let me just show you the colour and the consistency. I have some medium yellow from Montmartre, which is a semi-transparent. So same thing, nice and bright. Consistency is identical to the other one. So more white. I have a cup with um, a mix of burnt umber and titanium white. So I've just done equal quantities of each colour. And the last colour is my Marabou, which is called um, medium brown. So it's this one. So slightly warmer colour. Okay, so all of them are mixed. Um, one part pouring medium, one part paint. So I've actually put 60 grams of paint and 60 grams of pouring medium in each cup, which is two ounces. And I will put um, three drops, let's go with three, of treadmill silicone in each colour apart from the white. So let me just put my three drops. This treadmill silicone, I just found it online. Uh, and I can't really read the label any longer, but it's for, it's 100% silicone. So very handy. So let me stir. While I stir, I'm just going to let you know about my pouring medium. So I have a PVA glue water mix, 70% PVA glue. And, oh, I didn't put any in that one. And 30% water. So, and as I said earlier on, I'm just doing a one-to-one -one against my paint. So, obviously you need to work out, depending on your, the, the brand of paint that you use. Um, but mine's quite thick um, and creamy, so I can do a one-to-one. -one. Uh, for thinner paints, I would guess you, you need to increase your ratio of paint. Um, to one half slash two parts of paint to one part pouring medium. So I've already put my colours in the order I want to, to um, layer them in. So three cups and I wanted a dark light, dark light, dark light kind of thing. Uh, I know that the yellow is a semi-transparent. I believe the burnt amber is a semi-transparent as well. Um, this one, the Marabou, is a semi-transparent. I've added some white to this one, so that'd be opaque, opaque, and opaque. So I did manage to do my opaque, semi-transparent, opaque, semi-transparent mix, but at least I've got the colours there. So let's see what um, what pops up. So let me just start layering. If you don't want to watch me layering the cups, uh, but I'll mean to fast forward. So I'm going to try. I think I'll just do two. Um, layers in each cup, so I need to put quite a bit, so that'd be roughly if I've got 60 mils and 60 mils, that'd be about 20 mils in each for each layer. So I'm just yellow, yellow might be a bit bright, I don't know, we'll see. I've never used these colors to, together. So I do have to think, sorry about the noise, I think the neighbours are having some um, quite a lot of work done to the house. So you might hear some banging, drilling, loads of noises, but hopefully it won't call it twice. So now the mixed burnt umber and white. Let's have a look. 
As I say, it's not my usual colours, but you do have to challenge yourself at times. And they might turn out really nice together. I think they would work quite quite nice, quite nicely, sorry, together. So let me just go back to my white. So that would be my second layer. So I should have just enough to that's it. Finish my cup. Just scoop the bottom bit. Okay, so I prepared quite a lot of paint for the flip cups. And because of that technique, if you want to get some cells, um, you need quite a lot of paint. The silicone will come through um, the different layers, bringing the semi-transparent, transparent colours with it, which gives you the multicoloured um, rings on your cells. So that's how it works. And obviously to bring the silicone up to the surface, you need some heat. So I'll use both a torch and a heat gun. I think the torch is actually um, hotter so I get better results but I mean I did get okay results with the heat gun so you know I know I've got it if I ever run out of uh, butane um, and I can't get a new um, a new can I know I can use my, uh, my heat gun instead it's not a problem so there's the last bit of the yellow yeah, the only other yellow I had in the month March is actually the lemon yellow, but it's really, really bright, but it works absolutely lovely with uh, blues. I mean, I've done loads of pores, and with blues and um, turquoises, it makes absolutely amazing cells. So this one is definitely warmer. Um, I think you might be able to blend a bit better with other colours so I've got to try to use it with different colour combinations but, oh, let's see I will show you in due course okay so that's the last bit of my white gun so there's a leftover so I've got plenty of paint now so I'll be able to cover my canvas so when it's only a small canvas it's a 30 by 40, which is 12 by 16 inches. So when I experiment and try new colours or new techniques, I will only use a small canvas. Once I'm happy and I'm confident and I know what I'm doing kind of thing, um, I will do much larger canvases. Okay, and the last colour, which is the Marabou medium brown it gave me really nice uh, results as well this one with blue and gold colors in um straight pulls so i know it looks a bit yucky but it goes really really well with the colors uh, it seems to blend really really nicely so i'm quite happy with this one Okay, so there we go. So I've already put my silicone paint. I do not put any silicone at the bottom of my cups because I find that um, it gives me too much lacing. So that's not what I'm going for. So let's flip this. But good tip for you. If you do want some lacing effects, by all means spray some WD-40 because that's what I've got um, at the bottom of your cup quickly wipe it with some tissue paper uh, or kitchen roll and um, and it will release the paint quicker but you will get additional lacing so so let's give it a minute to fall on the side let me just move the paint out of the way there's my silicone let's move this Let's do some tidying it. Uh, right, okay, so I've got my torch. I've got my piece of cardboard to um, 
catch the corners in case I haven't got enough paint on the surface. I don't want to lose too much. You know, it sounds a bit more hollow. I don't think we're gonna we'll be uh, ready to um, flip. So go. Let's flip and drag. So you've got to find the right speed so you can cover the entire area. So that's it. Not too bad. I think I'll definitely have enough. Um, so let's sort out the corners and the, the edges of the canvas in a bit. Let's just so quite a few. Um, so that's popping up, so that's good. Yeah, I've got plenty, plenty of paint. So let's just sort out the edges. So never ever go in the middle, just do your edges because you know that's going to be um, basically taken away from the canvas when you tilt. So just helps your cover and helps with the flow. But do not put, so I've got a bit left on this side, so let me just do that. So you will get some sort of stripes um, on the bottom of your cup. So if you start putting it in the middle, you will get big stripes there. So maybe that's what you want. If that's what you want and you want to give it a go, by all means, go for it. But I don't think they're, personally, I don't think they're, side for so okay so let's move the cups out of the way one two three okay so i've got a lot of coverage um i have a few large cells coming up um probably the cluster there maybe i didn't stir my uh, my silicone well enough but so let me just move the paper towel away so we are going to start tilting from left to right take the canvas on the boat and let's see what comes up and then we'll, we'll torch so i think that's some sort of <clears throat> pardon me some sort of caterpillar worm thing there so let's just see but i've got plenty of pain so i'm happy i can definitely play with the composition so let me just bring my corner um my cobalt sorry on my corner so i don't lose too much at this stage that's it right let's do the other side so obviously go around your canvas let me just lift it so same thing let's try to bring it to that corner and bring it back that's it okay few bubbles I mean I've only just done a, a new batch of poor and medium so that's and that's why the, all the air bubbles are coming from but nothing major that we can't handle okay so let me yeah I'll do a quick torch just to see what's underneath and see um, what areas I can play with because I've got plenty of paint so I could really yeah definitely work on the composition there so nice and high very reactive so stay really really high if you get too close you're going to get loads of cells maybe that's what you want um, but having some negative space in the background is always nice so that is just down to personal taste There's no right or wrong in this technique, you know. So I've got a few things happening. That's good. I've got plenty of plates that I can stretch to make my cells bigger. So let's just see what's happening. So yeah, the... The silicone is coming up to the surface, as I said earlier on, bringing with it um, some of the colours. That's how you end up having multicoloured rings around your cells. 
So I do have an air bubble there, so I just need to get a skewer to remove it. Because if you leave your air bubbles, you will, that's it, you will have um, surprises. Okay, so quite a lot's happening there. So let me just cover this side, try to tilt the corners off, and then we'll see what we've got and how we want to um, to play it. So the weight of the paint is back in the middle. So I'm just going to gently go from one side to the other. Okay, I don't need my piece of cardboard for this because I've got plenty of paint, so I don't need to save it anymore. Let me just bring it back a little bit in the middle. So by tilting from left to right, obviously you do um, open up your cells. So you've got to be delicate. Don't go too fast because otherwise you will distort your cells. So that's about back right in the middle. So let me just turn it around so you can see. And now I'm going to give it a good torch um, and see what's happening. And then we can finally decide what we keep and what we can could be tilted off the canvas. So let me just. I thought I'd see more white. I mean, I had two cups of white in there. Um, maybe I should have put three. I don't have that much white popping up, but let's see. <laughs> So you've got some white, so you've got the yellow, you have two tones of brown. So let's see if we can open them a bit. So I'm going to tilt them because I've still got plenty of paint left. Let's see if I can open this area more and basically get rid of this area. Nothing as much is happening there. They're not really pretty cells. I've got a worm there. So, yeah, I think that's, that's the plan. Okay, so, let me check the weight of the paint. Where is it? I'm in the middle still. Yeah, so I'm going to have to put it sideways for you. So it would be much easier for me to tilt. So I hope you can still see. So still look on the top half. I mean, if you are looking at the bottom of your canvas in a way I mean the, the where you're tipping but do try to keep an eye on the top half as well because obviously it is stretching on the top and you don't want to really really overstretch um, cells there so I know you are focusing on where you're going but look where you are coming from as well so let's just put it back down so that's open quite a lot the center parts that I really really liked so that's fine I can still get rid of some of the paint but I don't want to over stretch I think I still need to go down this way so I can get rid of these two corners maybe I do like this part I do like this part I'm not keen on that but obviously you're never 100% happy with with your stuff so, um, let me see where the weight is. 
Okay, it's about there. Now, it's difficult to see on, on, obviously on the, on the video where the weight of the paint is, but when you do it uh, yourself, you can tell where it is. So let me see if I can tilt it this way a little bit and bring it back. So I just open slightly this area. Oops, I'm sliding. Because obviously my fingers are covered um, in paint. I do have some just masking tape under my canvas so I can hold it and it doesn't basically um, make the canvas all dirty. So that's a good tip as well. I'll show you next time how to prepare my canvases. So let's open these. Let's bring it back. Okay, hmm, start to lose their nice round shape, so I've got to be careful. If I can move it a little bit more there, so very, very gently is going to get rid of this corner, and then I will bring it back in the middle, try not to distort the shapes too much. So Taking it back the same way by tilting left, right, left, right. Okay, so let me put it back in the centre. Okay, well, I'm going to give it another torch, but I think if I try to tilt more, I will really distort um, what I've got, you know, already on the side. Obviously, they're stretching. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a fine balance between trying to find a composition that you like and then knowing when to stop uh, because you start to overstretch your um, your cells. So let me give you a quick torch and then I will bring you in and have a look. but I just wanted to fill that negative space there so I've got small cells popping up so that's good I've got to stop otherwise it's just going to be uh, very messy and it might get distorted so let me just remove my gloves and I will show you a bit closer how the multicolored cells um, or what they look like so let me just quickly remove you from that tripod so on the ones that are literally just torched you do have really nice rings of three colors these I've got uh, pretty colors as well let's have a look down there so yeah mainly three colors as well there so that's the original ones the ones that I really liked they have been stretched and opened up and the one from the top half, it's a nice colour there. I do like that mix. So overall, let me just turn it the other way so you can see a bit better. Yeah, not bad. It worked okay. They reacted, the colours reacted well together. So yeah, I think I will try to use these colours with other ones and see how they react. Right, thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.